Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where it is a gorgeous spring day in February here in this undisclosed swamp. Uh, it is Friday, February 26th. Where we'll be uh, brushing up against 90 degrees in February tomorrow. We're going to go from springtime to summertime in February tomorrow. But uh, on this beautiful spring day, I'm going to do what I do every Friday, and uh, that is check in with our friends at mongabay.com. Uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where the folks at Manga Bay just scour this collapsing planet for their weekly laundry list of doom and gloom and depression and an occasional dose of hopium. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what's on Rhett's mind uh, in no particular, well, just in the, I've never really understood how, how Rhett uh, prioritizes his stories. I, I think it's just as they come in. Uh, but we're going to start, where are we going to start? Let's, uh, I guess pretty much anywhere there are tropical rainforests still left on the planet. <clears throat> we are killing those tropical trees we are counting on to absorb carbon dioxide. A pair of recent studies show that rising temperatures, like 90 degrees in February, are shortening the lives of trees in tropical forests and reducing their capacity to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This phenomenon is already being observed in parts of the Amazon where the temperature has already crossed a critical threshold of 25 C, otherwise known as 77 Fahrenheit. By 2050, the same may happen in the Congo Basin, the world's second biggest tropical rainforest. But of course, as Manga Bay has reported on before, there will be no Congo rainforest left in the year 2050. So there will be no trees in the Congo rainforest. Uh, what you're going to see over the next 30 years is uh, the Congo rainforest uh, being destroyed at an even faster rate than the Amazon. Um, <clears throat> forests play a major role in fighting global warming, but the authors of the recent studies say we should not be overly reliant on them as a solution given their diminished capacity to absorb carbon dioxide. Yes, one more solution uh, we cannot count on. All right, let's look at uh, another name for this rant is the human impact rant. Another way of saying um, ecological meltdown is human impacts. Let's look at uh, human impacts on sharks, I guess. Human impacts leave reefs short on sharks and long on moray eels. Maybe it's a good time to be a moray eel on the planet. A new study has found that moray eels are more abundant on reefs where sharks are absent due to human pressures. Well, uh, th th this is a real uh, sky is a hazy, milky white story. Um, the paper hypothesizes that moray eels might be benefiting from a reduction in predators and competition for food. Do you think so? Anyway, okay, I love it when they ask a question. This point is ecosystem 
restoration, our last and best hope for a sustainable future. No, Rhett, our only hope for a sustainable future is to get the number of humans down to, I don't know, zero. Uh, anyway, this is today's uh, episode of the Manga Bay newscast. We take a look at the growing movement to restore degraded ecosystems worldwide. Yes. Did you know that this decade, the 2020s, has been declared the UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration? All right. We are kicking off the decade of uh, on ecosystem restoration. Yes. Oh boy. Anyway, moving along. What's going on with the latest whale stranding? Only one of 52 pilot whales survive mass stranding in Indonesia. Uh, Two of the three whales that initially survived later became stranded again and died. Yes. Uh, will they ever figure out uh, these strandings of these pilot whales? All right. Some of this stuff, uh, it's just, it's a weird collection this week of stories. It just takes too much to get into a lot of them in this rundown. Uh, anyway, all right. Let's get to the collapse of the Amazon rainforest as the Amazon rainforest tips from rainforest to savanna, which is ongoing. Uh, more and more <clears throat> tropical ecologists uh, just saying hasta luego, Amazon rainforest, hello savanna. As Amazon forest to savanna tipping point lo looms, how about unfolds, solutions remain elusive. Leading, science, leading scientists now project that if an additional 3 to 8 percent of rainforest cover is lost in the Amazon, it may overshoot a forest to degraded savanna tipping point. That shift could mean mega drought, forest death, and release of great amounts of stored carbon in the atmosphere to the atmosphere uh, from the Amazon. Despite this warning by scientists, Brazilian Amazon deforestation hit an 11 year high in 2020. Government clampdowns on environmental crime greatly. Uh, de decreased deforestation in the past, but Brazil is now facing a political backlash led by President Jair Bolsonaro, resulting in agribusiness and mining expansion. Hmm. And, of course, deforestation. Market efforts to create incentives have been ineffective. Do you think so? Uh, indigenous communities, because they're the best land stewards, should be at the forefront of public policy to conserve the Amazon. Uh, guys, I'm not going to get into this rant about uh, when I actually lived uh, with these some of these Amazon Indians down at this uh, indigenous reserve in the Amazon. Uh, if, 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 if what I saw with my own eyes is any indication of how indigenous tribes 
are the last best hope for the Amazon rainforest. Uh, hasta luego, Amazon rainforest. Anyway. <clears throat> Okay, we have electronic ears spying on poachers in Central American jaguar habitat. Yes. Uh, anyway. Uh, you know, all of this talk about the Amazon turning into Savannah and, and, and then <clears throat> you have all of these stories about the Savannah in Brazil disappearing. Uh, there, there, there's this no, no, no way to win. So the, the, you know, the rainforest that's supposed to be there is turning into degraded Savannah and the undegraded Savannah ecosystem that is supposed to be there is turning into a just one big uh, big ag industrial farm <clears throat> this is the latest on uh, latest data on Brazil's disappearing Cerrado uh, biome uh, there you go uh, you, you, you know Guys, if the if the rainforest don't get you, the savanna will. All right. You might not have realized this, but everything on this planet is connected. This is a conversation with World Wildlife Fund's Marco Lambertini. Yes. Uh, talking about uh, the drive uh, t the, for transformative change toward a more sustainable, equitable society that recognizes that human well-being is underpinned by a healthy planet. Uh huh. Uh, much of the focus on this concept has been on cutting carbon emissions from transportation and energy production. There has been less emphasis on protecting and restoring nature. Yes. Um, this is Marco Lambertini, the Director General of World Wildlife Fund, don't get me going off on a rant about World Wildlife Fund. Quote, science has been telling us for decades now that our, that our activities are destroying nature faster than it can replenish itself. Tackling nature loss requires us to fundamentally transform our productive sectors, but to do that we need a clear time-bound goal that drives ambition and that governments, businesses, and don't forget consumers can all contribute to achieving and be held accountable. Yes, uh, be held accountable. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's look at gold and diamonds. Gold and diamonds fail to shine as drivers of Amazon development. Gold and diamond mining. I've been. Uh, this is the first I've heard about diamond mining. Gold and diamond mining in the Brazilian Amazon do not contribute to sustained improvements in the economy, health, and education, among other development parameters. A new study shows. Uh huh. 
The study compared 73 Amazonian municipalities where mining takes place against others in the region without mining. It found that any improvements were brief, lasting no more than five years. Do you think so? Uh, all right, good old Rhett Butler has gotten him award, uh, gotten himself an award. Uh, Rhett has just been awarded the 2020 SEAL Environmental Journalism Award in recognition of environmental issues. Yes. Um, good, good for you. So Manga Bay was established in 2012. What? I was writing from Manga Bay in the year 2009. Uh, I have no idea what they mean that Manga Bay was... I I anyway. Um, good for you, Rep. You deserve it. If anybody deserves a an award for environmental journalism, it is Rhett Butler. Uh, Rhett's a little bit He's got a little bit of that apocalyptic streak in him. Might have something to do with him being the father of, I guess, how old is your kid now, Red? About three. Uh, but other than that minor criticism uh, of, of Rhett Butler, uh, he is the man. Uh, Rhett Butler has done more to, uh, to spell out the ecological collapse of a planet than any single individual I know of. You go, Rhett Butler. Uh, okay. Speaking of, uh, speaking of apocalyptimism, that coming from Madagascar, Young farmers adopt new methods to help lemurs, forest, and themselves. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, anyway, rat, uh, whatever, whatever you say, brother. Uh, all right, the UN. The UN, uh, once again, saving the planet. UN report, which I've mentioned here uh, in the last few days, this new UN report lays out a blueprint to end the, quote, suicidal war on nature. The United Nations is going, whose entire existence depends on our suicidal war on nature is laying out a blueprint to, yes, ah, whatever. All right, according to a new report from the United Nations Environmental Program, the world faces three environmental emergencies, climate change, biodiversity loss, and air and water pollution, which is another way of saying the world faces one environmental emergency too many people on the planet. But of course, uh, the United Nations will uh, obviously never mention the word overpopulation as the single biggest emergency to be facing this planet since that asteroid how many millions of years ago wiped out the dinosaurs. Uh, when will the UN finally admit what the emergency is on this planet? Yes. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said we should view nature as an ally, not as a foe, in the quest for sustainable human development. Yes, the, uh, the oxymoron of the 21st century 
sustainable human development. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, moving on. Uh, let's look at the wildlife trade. Study highlights terrible signs of species decline from the wildlife trade. A new study has found that the wildlife trade has led to a near 62% decrease in species abundance, raising concerns about its impact on terrestrial biodiversity. Yes. Uh, we've already mentioned that earlier this week. Uh, Not even gonna insult my intelligence or yours with that. Uh, okay, now we're looking at the uh, some big landslide in the Philippines this week. Philippine quarries under scrutiny after deadly mud flow buries homes. Uh, this is. Typhoon Goni back there in no in November. Uh, saying that the mud flow was exacerbated by the loose material left behind by quarrying operators. Yes, do you think so? And uh, anyway, then we have a similar story. We're just going to wind up in an Indonesian river today. A good place as any to wind up. Uh, I, I, I could go on with this, but I understand I'm uh, uh, talking to myself. So from mud flows in uh, the Philippines to coal slurry, a coal slurry spill in Indonesian river. A coal slurry spill into a river in Indonesian Borneo has killed hundreds of fish and forced authorities to shut off water lines to households. The slurry came from a waste facility run by coal mi miner, name I can't pronounce, which has apologized for the incident and promised to distribute clean water to affected residents. Uh, industry watchdogs and residents say such incidents are common on the river where coal mining is a major industry. There you go. And guys, we could uh, just keep right on going around the planet. Uh, coal slurry spills, quarry mud flows, Amazon tipping points. <sighs> but anyway, here in paradise, it is a gorgeous spring day and uh, I get a get out there and enjoy this beautiful spring day before I'm buried in a coal slurry avalanche or whatever. Uh, and I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your life before you get buried in a coal slurry. Coal slurry. <laughs> Bye guys.